So um, as stated last year in the beginning of the pandemic, people really restricted their purchases to essential goods. So especially grocery was not going down, but everything else dropped in demand. So today we really see a quite different picture in the markets. The US passed a 1.9 trillion COVID package for Americans, which means that every American received 1,400 US dollars for spending um, after Corona. And especially Gen Z's didn't have to pay off any debt, so they had a lot of extra cash on their hand. And this is why we see that this really fuels extra spending on non-essential goods such as gaming, NFTs, or even the public stock market, and that actually the economy is being revived due to that spending behavior. So I think this really changed again over the course of the pandemic, and now both essential and non-essential goods are being bought again. So importance of online selling is definitely still there and I would say it's one of the most relevant trends in retail. Users have become really used to buying online and technologies such as live stream commerce, virtual size guides or even 15 minutes deliveries have given another very strong push to e-commerce. Actually sales in e-commerce year over year grew by 38% which is a massive number for this big market and we don't see this trend stopping anytime soon so definitely most of the brands and retailers we speak to are heavily investing in e-commerce. So last year we said the time of distress gives a good opportunity to founders and we really believe that it does make people more creative. Over the course of the last year we've sent many new unicorns into the market. Gorillas just launched in May 2020 in which their 10 minute delivery already raised 335 million, making them one of the fastest growing unicorns ever. Another example is Hopin. Many of you tried them out during virtual conferences, and even though they started pre pandemic, this gave them a real boost. The company now raised 570 million and is active around the globe. Finally, also a new asset class emerged during the pandemic. Companies such as Presio from the US. Heroes or Seller X from Europe started buying FBA businesses to make them more efficient and by that created a completely new asset class. So we can definitely confirm the time of distress can make people more creative. So the role of brick and mortar is still a bit unchanged. Even though stores are opening again, they have to really try to reposition themselves now. We still believe that stores will become more of an experience center and actually our colleagues from China confirmed that this is the case there already. Many so-called cloud stores have been opened, but users just go to emerge with the brand to really experience the products rather than buying them. So we believe that commerce is going to move more to an offline experience and an online purchase and that this will be the new role of brick and mortar. Customers have become used to the convenience of staying in their houses and getting items delivered in under 30 minutes. Therefore, more and more companies in the space are emerging and despite Gorilla, there's Fast AF and GoPuff in the US, Flink Cashew and also our new portfolio company Makai in Europe, which is planning to revolutionize the delivery and source in Europe. This convenience is also changing customer expectations and therefore retailers and brands are starting to adjust to new delivery times. With ever more passes being shipped and e-commerce spiking, of course also this number is increasing rapidly. This is not only hurting revenues, but also puts a big burden on the environment, with around 5 billion tons of landfill waste created every year and 15 million tons of carbon emissions made annually. NRF found that 41% of purchases are being done with the intent to return an item later on, and this item will cost a retailer or brand 15 US dollars. Therefore, decreasing returns is very important for the bottom line and for a healthy business. There are different technological solutions such as virtual sizing and try-ons, models like NOC where you get an item for three days and if you don't like it, it's being picked up again, better product descriptions, but also psychology-based products that are trying to prevent returns for a higher sustainability and a higher revenue for corporate partners. We've already quickly touched upon livestream commerce in our report last year, but it now has really taken off also in the US and in Europe. This trend originally came from China and there it's already a big source of revenue for smaller brands and larger retailers. Here companies such as Douglas have started to do weekly live shows and are very successful with that. 
Actually, the global market is expected to reach 11 billion this year. Players such as Bamboozer, which have been in the space for a long time, are implementing new services that allow to not only live stream on the homepage, but also use this for further marketing purposes. And there's a lot of new players emerging, such as LiveFi or Lisa from Germany. So due to the pandemic and a lack of offline activities, many people turn to gaming. We've seen an immense growth, especially in mobile gaming. And since last year, the rate increased by 28% in US, 25% in Germany, and even 50% in the UK. This of course also puts a lot of pressure on brands and retailers, as gaming has become a very, very important channel to engage with your audience. Therefore, large brands such as Balenciaga have decided to turn the latest fashion shows into virtual environments. And actually, as a user, you could enter these show worlds, look at all the items and experience this in a very, very gamified space. NFTs are unique and digitally certified items like the Mona Lisa, but put digitally for collectors. A digital painting by Beeply was actually purchased for 70 million US dollars and recently Phil Washias, a digital artist, made 3.1 million US dollars in one day by selling digital NFT sneakers. Of course, not all digital fashion items are NFTs and shops such as DressX make this market ready for the mass with affordable digital clothing that can be worn in games or also virtual realities. With a predicted further increase in gaming, this trend will be, be, will be growing and we will also see more collections coming from other brands and designers alike.